We are here with the European delegation in Oslo to understand how Ruter was able to build its AV deployment in collaboration with local stakeholders. The goal is to understand what has been done until now on the technological point of view, but also on the project side. This is a very ambitious project aiming at testing a fleet of robotaxi very well integrated into the public transport network. To get a good insight of this project, we will meet Lisa and Lars from Ruter, as well as Enz from Holo. Welcome to the garage. It's uh, our uh, operational garage for our fleet of five uh, autonomous vehicles, shared autonomous vehicles. This is a Neo ES8 electric vehicle, uh, which is the base vehicle, but all the autonomous stack has been built on by our partners at, at Mobileye. So they've added uh, the whole sensor stack, which consists of, of LiDARs, uh, radars and, and cameras. They of course have the, all the whole uh, compute section, which, which runs the autonomous system, the IQ chip and so on, and uh, turn this uh, NEO into a fully autonomous vehicle. It's a testing platform meant for uh, uh, developing and validating the autonomous system out on public roads. And it's also uh, meant to be uh, to test the service, uh, basically a shared, on-demand, autonomous service uh, in collaboration with, with RUTA, the public transport authority here in Oslo. We think that um, the future of mobility will be autonomous, but shared autonomous, and they will be a large, larger version. Uh, something between a shuttle and a car. And we do think that having shared cars, shared autonomous vehicles uh, in a fleet where people can book it on demand, maybe do a little bit turn into a friendly neighbor to pick them up and down uh, to where they, they're working. It will be able to reduce the, the usage of, of a privately owned vehicle. For the last couple of years, uh, we've been working with uh, the rest of the European uh, market, so building a strong alliance with public transportation authorities and PTOs across Europe in order to build an alliance around these pooled services instead of having autonomous technology only serving the private vehicle market. We really see that there's a huge potential to transform the cities and the way we move if we coordinate it as a part of the public transit system and create these services so that we can free up more space uh, and allow for more livable cities in the future. We think that uh, a fleet of shared autonomous vehicles will be one of those tools uh, being able to compete with the private owned cars. So also, if you look at uh, how we utilize the spaces in, in space in our cities with curbside parking, parking lots, roads, etc. It consumes a lot of areas already, but we need to reduce that and, and convert it to other usage. So it's an important message for us also to say that we here in Oslo, we are very ready to be a first mover and have been working strategically to, to grow the service, understand the service, and also, of course, provide the uh, a unique user experience uh, where we can complement these on-demand autonomous services into our existing public transport system. <laughs> There's a lot of stakeholders that we need to think of in such a project. And of course, um, one of them uh, is over, over customers. We need to provide them with a better service than current public transport. Over public transport is extremely well, but needs to be better, right? And then we have the politician owners of the city. Also, we see uh, in, in public transit that we have a, a large lack of, of, of drivers. We do see that we will have a huge gap of uh, between the need for drivers and drivers in the future. And we know also that we have a lot of, of accidents as of today that needs to be addressed. So for our city, we need to provide, as I said, a, a new set of, of tools for them, so to say. We implement and, and operate autonomous vehicles. In this case, we have a customer in, in Ruda, or partner, who uh, has a, an idea of a service they want to, to be able to offer, this shared autonomous uh, uh, on-demand uh, service. Holo, we are the, the integrator here, bringing them the, the whole package. So we, we own the vehicles, we uh, uh, have the permit to, to, to drive autonomously, 
We have all the personnel involved to, to do operations. We uh, also ensure that uh, they have a, a, a white label app that they can brand in their Ruidos colors and, and so the people can, can book their service. And basically what Hulu is building in this is, is the whole package that Ruida can then uh, take to the streets and offer to their customers. We do think there's investment need from the public going from in the first phase of introducing autonomous vehicles uh, and, and until we get into an economy of scale where we have sufficient uh, vehicles, sufficient operational cost efficiencies and so on. We do think we have the need for financing that first start, but after something like 6,000 vehicles, 3,000 vehicles from that area, we do think that we will be able to provide a service that is economically compatible uh, with privately owned cars and don't have the need for public uh, subsidies as we see uh, on public transport today. We are now planning for the scale-up phase where we are looking into deploying hundreds of vehicles within the next two to three years and then gradually scale uh, up to at least maybe 10 to 20 or 30,000 vehicles where we can fully transform and replace the need for the, the private vehicle. And the way Ruter does that is to uh, to purchase uh, a, a mobility service. To make that step, we need to have a complete chain of in the, uh, like delivery chain of that service. And that is uh, operators capable of operating autonomous vehicles. Uh, infrastructure, I'm not talking about the road infrastructure, but, but, but uh, new type of, of, of uh, depots, uh, vehicle depots, new types of vehicle charging. We also know that the, uh, the vehicle provider uh, needs to be there, uh, a vehicle type that actually deliver on the, the use case, the need, and the router's use case is to be a, a competitor to the privately owned cars. So they are, they are smaller, maybe four to six seats, and they will be nicer and nimbler and uh, be something between a private loan car and what you see as a shuttle. And then uh, you also need to have the, um, the self-driving uh, software that's capable of handling everyday traffic, mixed traffic, at all speeds. When I say all speeds, in Norway that means from uh, zero kilometers an hour all the way out up to 90. We do think if you go 90, maybe also 80, you will be able to handle most of the traffic. We have a very strict set of procedures. We work very strictly with, with compliance and uh, we make sure uh, throughout the day that the vehicles are always in, in tip-top uh, uh, form, that the settings in the software are absolutely as they should be and that safety is, is always guaranteed. We document that diligently and are able to show over time that we have uh, uh, been operating uh, uh, the vehicle safely and, and, and using the technology in the way it was intended. And that is a key part of autonomous vehicle operations also in the future. If you scale it too soon, you basically scale your problems and don't scale your solutions. So when people are are, are talking to us about KPIs. Initially, it's all about getting the, rid of the safety driver. After that, we will look more into, we do that already, but we look into, uh, into the cost aspects of it, the operational cost, but we also in parallel look into the adoption of the vehicles. So it's multiple levels. So basically we have technical readiness, you have a service readiness, and then you have people readiness, and then you have the scalability readiness. So those are the, the KPIs that we are looking into. Uh, for making this the, the last uh, pilot. As we gradually can grow the service, uh, our ambition is to completely transform the entire service area of Ruti, which is serving a population of about 1.3, 1.4 million people and replacing the 700,000 private vehicles that are um, transporting people every day uh, in our service area and where we can combine and optimize where we can, uh, of course, reduce the congestion over time. So the more kind of pooled and shared autonomous services we can introduce fully on demand, the, the more we can also um, take a larger market share from the private vehicle in our service area today.